What's up guys, CJ here for Kung Fu Night. It is time for more It's Always Sunny. We're on Season 8, Episode 10. Last time we had the gang dines out at Squiginos. D was flying solo. We had the, the hodgepodge. The terrible twosome. What do Charlie and, and Frank call themselves again? The rummage. I don't know. They, they said it once in the episode when there was something trapped in Dee's wall, but I don't remember what it was. But anyways, Dennis was freaking out. Mac was feeling neglected by Dennis. The waiter had a rough, rough go about it, serving all three tables of our gang members. And Charlie was just being the awesome person that he is. Leave your comments down below. Links in the description for Patreon tiers. I'm not going to waste too much time. Let me get right into it. And great. You should be making a left turn here. There's no left. You don't know where I am, tape. This ain't working, Charlie. This ain't working. Oh, that a that's a recorded tape of Charlie. And he's talking to it. This is KPFN. Why would he talk to a tape as I sit here and talk to a computer screen that is playing an episode of a television show? Fuzzy balls with oh blinking lights. Oh, Sandra. <laughs> dumb bitch. <laughs> Hold on a second. Um, let's take a moment to appreciate what he was listening to. He was talking about compost, and it sounded like he was talking about burying things, but have perhaps dead bodies. I don't know. What do you think about that? Tell me. Let me know in the comments. I believe that if I inseminated the right woman, our seed could potentially, through an X-Men type genetic mutation, create a son capable of bending steel. Mm -mm. That's completely insane. Guys, so I'm sitting at a red light at a dead stop and Frank <coughs> ran into me out of nowhere. And now he's saying he's not gonna pay for the damages. I mean, mm -mm. did you know that the man cannot see? If you are driving around without the use of sight, then that is completely irresponsible and you need to pay for the damages. Yeah. It's How Charlie's fault. Dennis was eating a bowl of cereal. And it spilled all over the interior, and those are the only damages to the car. Yes. It didn't like any good cereal either. You know what? I don't have to justify myself to you. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take you to court. You don't want to go anywhere near a court. How many bench warrants for sexual misconduct do you have? A lot. And Frank, how many unregistered guns are in your car right now? A lot. The cereal events? <laughs> Okay, I'd like to begin with my opening statement. Who is the defendant in this matter? That's not a statement. All right, well, irregardless, <laughs> uh, I would like to know as Frank's- Irregardless. Client, stop treating this like it's a trial and like this is a courtroom. Let's just present the facts to each other and then let's decide as a majority who's in the right. That being said, Frank would be the defendant. No, that implies that I am guilty. He's right. If anyone's ever accused of anything, I automatically assume they're guilty. You do, yeah. right? I do. Yeah, you what do. Kind of Damn. Damn. I'm finished. I have been making this. It shows how we each feel throughout the trial. Yeah, I made little gavels with our names on it, and we can move them accordingly. And at the end, whoever has the most gavels on their side wins. Nobody is going to want to use that, because it's so stupid. We are dealing with a serious issue here, OK? My property is at stake. What are you doing? Well, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, not that I gonna... like what he did there. I'm going to go ahead and no. move my guy. No, oh, well, don't everybody good, start right. moving their Damn. gavels over to his side. We haven't even OK, well, good. At least you have the common sense to be on my side. Oh, I'm the judge. No, you're not. Can I be the bailiff? You are not anything. I'll allow it. No one is anything. I'm gonna scratch oh. everybody's eyes out of their sockets. What are witnesses? Oh, okay. All right. I want to bring in some wild cards. Come on. Common sense is on trial. And well, common sense would tell you that eating a bowl of cereal while operating a car is, it's, it's reckless. One might even call it donkey brain. But if anything, it's not donkey brained to drive around with a bowl of cereal. It's donkey brain to drive around without the use of your vision. You're using so this donkey brain term a lot here. Frank, you were admitted into a mental institution. Is this correct? That's correct. I would like to add into evidence Article 1. Uh, Mac, will you please read this document? By the power of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, read mental institution, hereby decrees Frank Reynolds to not have... Donkey brains. What? what? That, is that 
That's not real. Yeah, great. What does this have to do with anything? Oh, well, Dennis, if by your own admission, someone who has donkey brains could be considered reckless or... <laughs> okay, or Charlie. Then I ask you this. <laughs> I ask you Do you have any such certificate? <laughs> <laughs> How do we know you're not a donkey brain man? The defendant will answer the question. The defendant? I'm not the defendant! <laughs> no. No further questions. No! Oh, why are you Very good, Charlie. You don't have a certificate. Okay? I just, I wish you had a certificate. Oh, bullshit! She's on the fence. Would you like a glass of wine? Yeah, all right. Huh? Why not have a glass of wine? Oh, oh. <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah, we can see the point he's trying to prove here already. <laughs> see, I bashed into Frank while he was at a dead stop. That's completely my fault, Frank. I will pay for all the damages to your shirt. <laughs> well, when you put it like that, you got me. You know, I'm on Dennis's side now. He just convinced me. Well, it occurs to me that Frank assumed responsibility for a potential spill the second he took the wine. And therefore, in the car, Dennis is at fault. I am on Frank's side, case closed. You're interested in credibility? I would like to call my next witness, Mac. You weren't even there, though. So, Mac, you seem to be pretty locked into Frank's side at this point. And, Charlie, you find Mac's arguments to be fairly credible and convincing. I do. Why is it that you disagree on the subject of superhumans? Well, we don't. Well, Mac, if your character is incredible, then are your arguments? Strike this line of questioning from the record, please. Do you or do you not believe that you could create a superhuman race of strong men through and genetic steal. Do you or do you not believe that you can create a superhuman race of strong men through genetic mutation? That's ridiculous, D. What are you talking about? You were just telling Charlie this morning all about the, oh, have you seen X-Men and in my seat and... No, what? I was joking with Charlie. <laughs> that could never happen in the real world, D. That's like a comic book thing. He's oh. credible. Why don't you believe that you could pass down a gene that would eventually evolve into a race of supermen? Because evolution doesn't exist, of course. I'm sorry? Oh, could you repeat that again for the room? Because evolution is bullshit. It's not real. God damn it! Real <laughs> oh, man, I love how just... Each character has the time to lay the groundwork for their argument. And some you can see where they're going. Clearly, others take a little bit more time to develop. I didn't know exactly where they were going with with Mac. I mean, yeah, like, you know, superhuman stuff. And he, he got out of it. He just he lied. Of course, he doesn't believe he, he believes that shit. That was, that was a bold for his lie. But the evolution thing just caught me off guard. So I love that. Dick. We gotta get Charlie to stop thinking you're a lunatic. Look, DeAndre's gonna side with Dennis. That's a given. Okay, Frank, for you, I will make myself credible in Charlie's eyes again so you can win. Now, this is all about making myself credible in your eyes again, and I'm gonna do that by admitting that evolution is a lie! God oh. damn you, Mac! What I feel like he's at, like, the fact that there's a board, is there any way he could possibly sway them through some twisted means of... I don't know, their own logic and other things that they believe in. Or I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what I happens. Because I'm an American. I won't change my mind on anything, regardless of the facts that are set out before me. Mac, look, you're wasting our time. Because the smartest scientists in the entire world all agree that it's real. Science is a liar sometimes. This is Aristotle. He believed that the Earth was the center of the universe, and everybody believed him because he was so smart. Galileo, and he disproved that theory, making Aristotle and everybody else on Earth look like a bitch. <laughs> of course, Galileo then thought comets were an optical illusion. He was also wrong, making him and everyone else on Earth look like a bitch again. And then, Sir Isaac Newton gets born. Hmm. Of course, he also thought he could turn metal into gold and died eating mercury, making him yet another hmm. stupid know that. bitch. No. The pattern of bitches. <laughs> Mr. Bates, these were all the smartest scientists on the planet. They kept being wrong. Mm. And what makes you think what your scientists are writing is any more truer than my saints? Because there are volumes of proven data. There are fossil records. Oh, fossil records. Ah! I didn't even think about the fossil records. I guess I'll concede. Oh, wait, well, one more thing before I do, Mr. Reynolds. Have you seen these fossil records? Well, no. I'm, no. 
So let me get this straight, Mr. Reynolds. Did he say he took it on blind faith? Information pave? from a book written by men <laughs> you've never met. Oh. And you take their words as truth. A leap of faith? Just answer the question, Mr. Reynolds. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I rest my case. Well, that got me. That's well played. That's well played. You got it? I actually don't believe in evolution anymore. I don't know. He created a reasonable doubt. He makes you sound like a stupid science bitch. Oh, my God. Let's just get back on track here. I would like to make my closing argument. No, 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 no. This has gone on long. Mark Furman, the racist ass fucking cop. <laughs> the man on tape. You can't think of why I might like to set a precedent of responsibility for when someone's car gets destroyed? Dodge Neon, no. Red Volkswagen, Red Station Wagon, I mean, something else. Anybody else? Anybody? I, I can't really think of anything. Can you think of anything? You guys have destroyed every single car that I have ever owned. I love how that actually comes back around and like they just insert it into the show. Like we're doing season eight. I, I, like I, I love how that shit isn't just put to bed and just like it happened and we forget about it. Like despite how like crazy these characters are, there is some sense of self-awareness for and they remember some of the things that happened to them in the past. They're like, I wish that wasn't a coincidence. I'm gonna call you out on it, you know? actually gonna go to the fence let's take this to the streets thanks guys yeah man no worries have a good one nice he actually said something i was literally about to like mention the dude in the background but man every time they're arguing in this bar there's some poor soul in the background just having a beer by themselves and now they're actually interacting with him which is hilarious and it looks like they're about to take it to the streets, like step up two. Okay, here's the deal. Dennis, if you can drive to your apartment and back without spilling a single drop, D, your precedent is set, and Frank, you pay for everything. On your mark, cassette, go! Did he say it was a race? No. All right, steady. What are you doing? We gotta see for ourselves how reckless this is. She's gonna fly through this windshield. Then I stop at a stoplight, and once I'm stopped, and everything is safe, take a bite. Make a left. Right. Right. Right, no, right, 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 right or left. You make up your mind. Andrew, shut up. Well. What's up? I was trying to give directions and she interrupted. And she's you. I was she's reiterating. Charlie was giving directions oh, and okay. I was. So this is your fault. No, this, it was Dee's fault. She'll pay for the damage. Don't yeah, you dare. She should, Don't yeah. you dare. No. Okay, you know, I have an idea. Should we have a trial? Me and Charlie? That's too many tries. It's too many tries. Oh, that is so fucked. Charlie was giving the I was only For all the number of cars that she has lost, that is the worst possible resolution. Which is sunny. It is sunny. Very sunny. Alright, great episode of Sunny here. Loved Max presentations and uh, his indicators he created for where everyone stands on the issues. I like how just about everyone got a chance at making an argument and swaying the others on some point. Yeah, Max's presentation especially was funny, calling Aristotle, Galileo, and Isaac Newton all bitches, and including everyone on Earth. It's all in the delivery for that man, you know. Again, very impressive how they brought Dee's loss of cars the whole time she's been in this show back to the forefront. We didn't just ignore it. It's been at least three cars. There's a car in there I'm forgetting. Didn't she have a Range Rover at some point, maybe? There's at least three cars that she lost. Um, one was in Mac and Charlie Die episode right into the wall. The other was the kid that just stole it and drove to California in the Gang Hicks Throat, His Throat episode. Don't remember the other one, though. And also halfway through this episode, I realized that this is... Uh, this was the finale for season eight, so I think uh, this was a shorter season, only 10 episodes. Um, when we usually get our, I don't know, is it 14 or 15 sometimes? I especially like seeing Charlie, Lawyer Charlie, in action. I think he probably had the best point, the best zing on, on Dennis. You know, they mentioned the Donkey Brains stuff and the certificate. I would have thought they, that they put that together within the short time frame in preparation for this, but it seems like they were dead serious. I know that's not a real thing or anything, but like, it's, I think they're replacing that uh, for another mental condition 
yeah, well, I think that wraps up my thoughts. Leave your comments down below. Links in the description for Patreon tiers if you want to get straight to Season 9 of It's Always Sunny. I think that's it. I'll catch you guys next time, all right? Peace.